you're an artist, so you have these kind of slightly romantic ideas of a bohemian lifestyle. Most artists do because it's part of the cultural heritage. We were living in, Brian who's my good friend, him and I were living in a space like this and he had, um, he, ha he was organizing it, running it in London and that was kind of the first show that we did together. It was the, probably the first time I had exposure to an artist living space like this. But it was the first sort of introduction to that romantic bohemian lifestyle that I had read in some places. And the conversation was really good. There were like real artists talking about like real art, <laughs> you know? Um, and that was quite exciting. So that poster was kind of the first art show really that I did outside, like, yeah, it's probably the first art show that I did, but it was also the first, like, collective living experience, artist commune experience. And, and so when my friend Brian came to stay here, he did a residency, a three month residency, he's an anthropologist. He brought that and it was really nice because it's now 2011, so it was from three years ago that he had kept it. Um, so it was nice for, him to, for that to reappear and him to frame it and, and donate it to this space because he was like kind of making a connection and drawing like a Shorts. <laughs> like this half or this half? 
Yeah, he was shot cocking. It was a very arbitrary way of deciding these spots, I guess. There was this one, um, one piece, of one print artwork that had a series of dots and a, like a rectangle, um, which would be a picture of you later, but had several like these blue dots on it. It was, and we also were given a map of the surrounding area of around the Verge Gallery in Australia. Um, so we made a map of the same size and. This, uh, of around our land. And the map was rectangular, just like the center of this print. And so we superimposed our map on top of this rectangle on the print with the blue dots. And wherever the blue dots landed was where we would um, put these objects into the world. And it was, a lot of the spaces were really great. Two of them landed on the river, right in front of our building, and one landed on the train tracks, and, um, and these spots we're going to explore right now. So, um, I'm already, Aaron has already done the performance on the river, which we have a video of, which is um, pretty cool. Um, yeah. It's more of a hangout culture here, isn't it? Well, you know, not like uh, work five days a week, finish work, and then completely get the stuff. You want to do this, artiste? I, mean, I guess I'm the writer. <laughs> yeah. This, this is your. This is your game. This is mine. You're the words, man. <laughs> so I fooled everyone into thinking. I feel, like I'm a, I feel like I feel like I'm a con man. I'm always quite excited by um, writers that do uh, art. I think it's always a lot more interesting than a lot of art. Like I was, I, I really liked. Um, I thought Tracy's work was the best work on Friday. Oh, yeah, Tracy's really good. Um, because like the content's just good. And then the idea that it's not just in a book or on a blog or something is, is nice. I, I think, I, I wish I could say that about all the writers, but there's definitely a lot of writers who... Did I put that wrong? I think I did. Did yeah. <laughs> I put that? It's, it's symmetrical, so... Yeah, it looks like a little... What's next? Man? Side, yeah. It's going to be quite political, this. Why? I don't know, any, any, any Middle Eastern thing is always political, isn't it? Yes. Well, probably this is related, with the, the sign I think was related to where their gallery used to be, though. So it's not, it used to be like a, some like theater thing. Tin sheds or something. Oh. So like, it, yes, it's, it sounds very political, but it also has like a it's ambiguous. It also has a concrete, like sort of like place it's coming from. I, it's just like it's not just like political art for political sake. This is good. Yeah. It's my f my favorite yet. Okay. It looks kind of official. Yeah. And hey, once you get one, you move those maps. Are you start taking pictures. I'll get the wee paste. It's all good. Yeah. Is that a bug crack 
You mentioned like, for like, like little orange cones, this is kind of like, like rainbow cones or something. We're making art. It's an art project. It's an art project. I was like, okay. We're going to have to close the freeway. <laughs> With no authority whatsoever. No authority whatsoever. It's an art project. I you see this, um, some like some, I think like a boxer. Oh yeah, we're at the we're at MoPA, Museum of Contemporary Art, the Geffen Center, downtown. downtown. And uh, at the book fair, we're in the museum section of the LA Art Book Fair. It's the first book fair, art book fair um, in LA. It's been produced by Printed Matter, which is a big I don't know what it is. It's like a big book 
store slash book emporium in New York. They put on the New York Art Book Fair. It's run by AA. It was a fascinating um, artist, producer he used to be in. consensus-based organizational model uh, where we meet every week and discuss whatever is on the agenda. But we were in, we had quite a tight deadline for the publication because we wanted to send it to Sydney for a show that we're doing over there at Sydney University's Verge Gallery. And so we try we decided to try a different organizational model. A dictatorship, a benevolent <laughs> dictatorship, uh, where decisions could be streamlined. So rather than sitting around a table discussing for hours what size font to use, we chose um, Annie, Annie Dennis to um, be the editor in chief and make decisions as and when they became difficult. And you know, it's an experiment, and we're going to take some of the things that we learned from this project and feed it back into the way the board is run. Mostly in identifying clear roles. Um, but yeah, we worked really well as a team, and I think that's kind of important. And we met our deadlines. We met our deadlines, and we kept we kept making deadlines. And we only decided to do the book fair about three days before the book fair started, and I posted on Facebook to share a table with Concord's first publication and Ken Ehrlich who runs Aaron Body's Press which is which is here um, very kindly got in touch uh, by email and said he's happy to share some of his table and that's really kind of him and, and, uh, and it's a great press to be next to because Aaron Body's has beautiful, beautiful books about site critical space critical something that comes from really likes. Train tracks run along the river, between the river and the road, San Fernando Road, where our building stands. Usually the trains are quick, loud, passenger cars with windows, but occasionally a big steel freighter will come through, so, slow, so slow it's silent until the earth begins to shake. I can feel the vibrations come up come up my feet as dust slips from the roof cracks before it's gone. We got used to this over time. I even began to like the trains over a year. We forgot until we have guests. A big one comes through and they tremble. It can be quite a shock. I know. Saw cutting is a messy process. It creates a lot of dust. Also, diamond plates are expensive. But I am more concerned that it is loud. This is why the cracks in the floor of my bedroom are so important. I know everything I am looking for is beneath my feet. Hopefully the cracks go all the way through. When I wake, I'm home alone, so I will often have a few hours to make noise without raising suspicion. The front door makes a loud screeching noise, so I know if anyone comes home. Maybe I'll get rid of them for a weekend by engineering a Joshua tree trip. Becca has been talking about this for a while, so it shouldn't seem strange. You know, I drop out the last minute. I have to hope 
I made my way down Grand and then up Hope Street to, to U.S. Bank Building, only to discover that they did not have an observation deck. I was denied entry, rejected. I descended a large cascade of steps to realize I had come full circle. Central Library was in front of me in shadow, topped by a pyramid and a gold hand holding a torch. History has been liberated, collected and stored away. No one will tell you where to look. No one wants to carry that way. Okay, we had this conversation. I could have sworn that you like Tell a few of us the idea so we can get a feel for what you need, how long you need the space for. Um, it sounds like you've got a plan. Like, when you have to write order statements, you have to kind of give yourself a biography which makes your artwork seem very personal. It's part of like the marketing or like when you're writing for grants and stuff, you have to make the artwork seem personal. And I'm being a bit cynical, but like I often say that because I have a mixed background and my mom is Chinese Australian, my dad's American Jewish, I was born in England and I have an Indian name that like I make work from this kind of multiple tracks and I suppose it's true I don't think that's marketing but there is this part of the art world that forces you to find like as part of your bio biographical narrative that explains or justifies the art that you I had an interview with uh, Beirut on Saturday morning. Um, that was pretty exciting. Because it's a museum and Anton Vodokol and Jalal Tufik are taking this experimental school in Beirut. Um, so I might go do that in September for 10 months. My proposal was to look at uh, the ancient Persian Royal Road. I know it doesn't go through Lebanon, doesn't go through Beirut, but I think it would be a good place to start exploring the Middle East. I use my writing as a way to formally guide the rest of my practice. So like I'll write, like I'm ahead of myself with my writing and then I look at that and that's how I work out how to make a film or how to do something else. But I've also been writing for publications and um, I applied for the arts writing job at UC Irvine. They're looking for an arts writer professor. And I don't think I'll get it, but it was good practice. I'm sort of the only one putting the mission or like advocating for a mission. And the, the idea that like I like and 
interested in it's kind of curating by feeling or organizing culture by feeling and I don't really know what that means um, but I do know that the best communities are built based on emotion and feeling not based on uh, not solely based on singular shared interest I mean I guess singular shared interest is, is one way to build a strong community there's a great Goran film where this community meets around model trains and they're all like super into model trains it's a strong community but I'm not interested in that I'm interested in a, in a heterogeneous or diverse community but yeah like I said I'm getting restless I'd like to go somewhere I have a friend who wants to do a project in India, um, which would be like December, January, February time. I don't know, I, I guess I feel myself growing, um, like my practice, my own artwork growing, and like improving, and like improving, not rapidly, but at a quite a solid pace. And if I don't feel Concord, improving at the same pace there's a kind of unbalance uh, but maybe that's an unfair expectation you know because it's a collective it can't be, like a person can change their mind and change their change who they are or like grow as they want to right like it just takes making a decision whereas making a decision with a collective means everyone in the collective has to make that decision they have to understand why they're making that decision they have to believe in the decision and not just like go with it because the majority is going with it so yeah I think I think Concord collective collaborative work is always going to be slower but so yeah I mean I guess that's the question <laughs>